Mr. Secretary, Inspector General Devaney, we thank you for taking the time to appear before the committee today and appreciate the work that you've done. And I want to say in the very beginning, I certainly agree with the comment made in your latest report, Mr. Devaney, that 99.9 percent of all the employees at the Department of Interior are hardworking, professional, and have the interests of the American uh, taxpayers at uh, heart. Uh, let me state that I'm not going to rehash the sordid details of the jaw-dropping antics of certain employees of the Minerals Management Service that were revealed last week in three IG reports. And, Mr. Secretary, I want to commend you. You have taken forthright action even before the release of these reports, and you have called me on this latest report and updated me on the status of, of the actions that you've taken, and, and I commend you for taking those actions. What I do want to focus on during this hearing are three matters. First is rather the culture of ethical failure that the IG found within the Royalty and Kind program is just the tip of the iceberg. Are we faced with a burgeoning scandal in terms of ethical lapses within the MMS? Or were the instances set forth in the three IG reports issued last week the total extent of it? Second, to what extent can we determine how much those ethical lapses have cost the American taxpayer? We certainly know from both the IG and GAO investigations and hearings that have been cut, conducted by this full committee and our subcommittees that programmatic failures are costing taxpayers money. Just last week, for instance, G reports found that the United States receives one of the smallest, one of the smallest shares of oil and gas revenues in the world. That the federal and oil and gas leases are not being diligently developed, and that production is only occurring on 12 percent of offshore leases and 5 percent on onshore leases. And we found that the Interior Department is unable to provide certainty that companies are paying the royalties owed the American people. So I think it is now appropriate to see if we can get some inkling as to the extent that the cronyism between MMS employees and the oil and gas companies have cost the Treasurer in terms of royalty underpayments, lack of royalty payments, and shortcomings in the royalty in kind transactions. And finally, third and finally, from what I can tell to date, only two MMS employees have been prosecuted. Jimmy Mayberry, who pleaded guilty in July to conflict of interest, and Milton Dow, who entered a guilty plea just this past Monday for rigging bids. I'm curious as to whether the IG has sought further prosecutions from the Justice Department and what the response has been. As we all know, these are serious issues, but they are more serious now as we face a certain prospect that vast areas of federal waters will become to open to oil and gas leasing in the very near future. These issues are serious within the context of onshore oil and gas leasing and leasing within the Gulf of Mexico, but they will become more amplified when we expand leasing off the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. Mr. Devaney, I do thank you. Thank you very much for your diligence on these matters. I note the number of hours, the, number of time, the amount of time that it has taken uh, for this investigation, the frustration that we all felt with it due to lack of cooperation uh, from the big oil companies, one in particular, Chevron. But uh, I do appreciate your diligence. I've also uh, been at this a long time myself longer than I care to mention. I was on this committee, for example, when we crafted the first federal onshore on oil and gas royalty management act of 1980. And we thought, we thought we had solved it then. I, I was chairman of what was then the energy subcommittee in 1987 when our previous full committee chairman who's with us this morning, Mr. George Miller and I championed the federal onshore oil and gas reform act. And I have to say that the only issue before the committee that has been more vexing in my tenure here is reforming the mining law 
of 1872. So, Mr. Secretary, I just want to state here and now that I greatly respect you, and I have complimented uh, the reforms you have made. You are a person of courage and conviction, and I'm aware of your attempts to emphasize ethics and stewardship within the department, stewardship and our responsibility to the American taxpayer for the disposition of their resources. Certainly the ethical failures that were the subject of the IG's reports issued last week took place, as you have told me and as we're all aware, between 2002 and 2006. And I would note that you were confirmed by the Senate on May 26 of 2006. I'm also aware that you're taking action, presumably with respect to certain civil service employees named in those investigations, and as such would not be able to delve into the details on those actions during this hearing. I recognize that there are criminal investigations, for example, ongoing to which we cannot refer. So, gentlemen, thank you again for appearing before this committee. And I now recognize the ranking member, the gentleman from Mexico, Mr. Pierce, for any comments he may wish to make. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'd like